On this episode of Carpe Diem, age is just a number. How to have fun forever. You want to know the secret of getting old? Live your best Zoomer life. The best way to keep going is just keep going. Zoomers, Lou Mancuma, Elizabeth Ball, and Dr. Gloria Gutman tell us their secrets. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome to Carpe Diem. Now, according to Stats Canada, over 30% of Canadians are over the age of 45. Canadian media pioneer Moses Neimer coined the phrase Zoomers or Boomers with zip. And as he always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. Moses and Darren Maharaj visited Mr. Fishman, a definite Zoomer. What size you got there? Extra large? Give him an extra large here. Okay. That's, That's 90 year old Jerry Fishman serving up another great deal here at his Toronto North York store, Jerry's for Fashion, where he works on average 13 hours a day, seven days a week. Working this, these many hours, it just seems to keep your mind occupied. Some people get Alzheimer's at a young age, and this keeps my mind working 24 hours a day. The best way to keep going is just keep going. And of course, that saying is also a favorite of her very own Zoomer in chief, Moses Neimer. So when he heard about Jerry, he had to come by for a Jerry for Fashion custom fitting. Who is a man that would risk his neck for his brother, man? Who's got the baddest shirt around? <laughs> Which one is the longest lasting independent retailer in Toronto? How old were you when you started work? about 13. As soon as I had my bar mitzvah, yeah. I was working full time. So Jerry was 15 years old? Around 15 years old. When you designed this? There. For a newspaper in Owen Sound. Take a look at nice lady sweater. <laughs> yeah. Mitts. Yeah, 49 cents. Blankets, 349. Blankets. Been here since 1955. And in that time, I guess you've had some repeat customers, right? I would say we've had hundreds of them and thousands of them. Go ahead, try them both. Yeah, yeah. There aren't too many people as agile as I am. Yeah, you're looking pretty good for I 90 years old there. Not there. too bad for a guy who walks almost, I would say, maybe five miles a day in the store here. Do you do anything special? Do you follow a particular well, first diet? Of all, I don't drink any kind of alcohol. I eat mostly vegetables, an awful lot of fish, a lot of green products. It's a wonder. I could never do the hours and the days that he does. When's he retiring? Uh, well, maybe you know more than I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever retire. Unfortunately, my wife isn't well. So those are the things that are going to keep me going, is to help people who can't help themselves. And everybody seems to trust me, so I'm a pretty honest young man. Those boys are never going to retire. Blue, are you ever going to retire? I was on an audition this morning, had a hoop, and still rolling, man, because there's a lot happening out there. I'm so enjoying the growth in the film industry in Vancouver. It's blowing my mind. I was there from the beginning, man. Yeah, you are. And it's just, just exploded. Some of my favorite shows to watch on TV are shot right here. Now, you come from the arts world. You went into politics. Are you ever going to hang up the gloves? <laughs> Not likely. People keep asking me if I'm enjoying being retired, and I sort of look at them, gee, I didn't know I was, you know. <laughs> it's, that, it's that kind of feeling. Yeah. But there's so much to do in the city. Um, as Blue says, there's so much work for actors, and that needs to be encouraged. So I'm always working to try to show off who our artists are and what they're doing in the city, as well as being able to pass on the knowledge that I acquired running theaters. So well, I think that's what happens, right? It's a life of accumulated experience. And Gloria, you're a perfect example. You're not going anywhere. No, well, retirement is not a word in my vocabulary. But I'm having great fun enjoying the arts and going to all kinds of odd and wonderful productions that are going on in the city. You really need to get out and look for all of the good things. Well, that defines a Zoomer. And um, are you a Zoomer? What does it mean? It means living a long, healthy life. Zoomer means just being active and keeping going. Yeah, it's dancing on the table still, you know, of course, out there. At a minimum, I bicycle every day. When I'm not writing a book, I tend to swim five days a week, about a mile and a half a day, 
and occasionally lift weights. Well, I walk around a lot, but I also like to draw. And and if you if you look at this scene right here, you see all kinds of all kinds of volumes and shapes and and perspective and so on. That's very very exciting. I'm I'm still at it. Gloria, it seems like each one of those people found something that they love to do, and no matter what, they just keep doing it. Well, that's a really important thing, that you have to find things that are going to be meaningful and that give you a reason to get up in the morning. We hear a lot about social isolation these days, and some people don't have the same friends that they grew up with. They may have lost a spouse. Yeah but you have to replace those with other people or with other activities. Nothing wrong with being by yourself if you like yourself. Hey, I love me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. believe, look, that's where it all starts. You gotta love yourself. You get there and everything flows. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. When we come back, we'll talk reinvention. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. He does very well, holds his own, he plays twice a week, still bond spiels, at least uh, two or three times a season. Yep, uh, no. Oh, Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. In this segment, let's dive in. What if our bodies don't work the same? Our plans, our dreams need to change. And uh, Blue, you had some changes to make recently too. Oh, kiddo, I did the commercial, man. I was on my way to the bathroom, and uh, on my way somehow I lost my balance and fell. Oy. Flat on my back. No pain, but the, the surprising thing to me was I could not, could not roll over and get up. So I did the commercial, I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, next thing I know, I'm on dialysis. I've been doing it ever since, but it was a wake up call. Well, we have one body, we have to learn how to use it. That's what's up. And it doesn't yeah. always let us know ahead of time, and I'm so very happy to see you sitting here today. So am I. Now let's meet a dreamer who continues to dream despite having achieved so much. Come on in. It's a good thing you're only 81. <laughs> 81. Perfect. Okay. So we've got to cover dance, choreography, costume making. When you say all your costumes, are these all the ones that you wore or other people? No. Wore? This is what I make for my shows. What? I make them all for my Where shows. Where do you find the time? Look at that. How did you start in the entertainment industry? I studied ballet every day in the late 40s and then went to New York and studied with Balanchine at the New York City Ballet School. Wow. And that's, I tore my Achilles heel. Oh. So my solo ballerina days were over. That must have been hard. Very hard, very depressed about that. But my dad was fantastic. Uh, I arrived home in a cast and uh, he already had me registered at Dalhousie, and I was only there a couple of weeks, and they asked me to choreograph uh, The Boyfriend, and so I choreographed uh, several musicals for Dalhousie after that, and I was busy, opened a ballet school. I've taught ballet uh, practically all my life, but ended up doing multicultural dances. My mother said one thing, if you don't learn something new every day, go and dig a big hole and jump in. Dancer, choreographer, artist, costume designer. Now you know a little bit about reinvention too, Elizabeth. Oh yes, over and over again. First I started as a dancer, and then I became an actor, then an artistic director with Carousel Theatre, where I worked for 27 years. And then I went on and built the Waterfront Theatre on Granville Island. And then I reinvented myself because I didn't think our artists were getting enough promotion. So I decided to be an advocate, and I was an advocate for a number of years, and that was a truly wonderful experience. Sometimes, as we age, we just have to adapt so we can keep having fun. 
Nobody can throw a rock better than this guy, 97-year-old Jack Logan from Tawasin. He does very well, holds his own, he plays twice a week, still bond spiels at least uh, two or three times a season. Likes to sit back on the, uh, up in the ice chip lounge at the end of a game and have a, a rum and coffee, joke with the boys and talk about their game. Yep, uh, no. How has curling changed for you over the years? Well, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Normally when you curl, and all the good curlers still do, they throw the rock, eh? Mm -hmm. You bend down, you can probably be able to notice some of them doing that now. So you got to keep up with but, the young guys now? Well, we try to, and that's what this stick. That just only started about uh, 15 years ago uh, when somebody introduced this. Ooh. And, it, and it's brought a lot of a lot of people back to curling that wasn't, weren't able to because of knee problems and hip problems and that sort of thing. Hey, we made it. The secret is to get the right weight. <laughs> I'm not as fast. I'm not as fast. What? Great innovation for Jack to keep curling. Gloria, how have you had to adapt uh, in your busy career? Well, it's, it's been interesting because I didn't start out to be a gerontologist. I got married young. I was a baby bride and uh, happened to be in Calgary at the time the university was just starting up there and I went to the psych department and the fellow there who was one of the first generation gerontologists who said to me if you're interested in aging I'll take you on. So what, what age were you when you started in gerontology? Uh, 21. 21 <laughs> and so you now here you are all the way into well, our it's, demo it's, into the Zoomer. Yeah, it's a little weird to sort of grow up and, and become your own subject. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and when, when you know sort of what the uh, alternatives are, uh, but basically a person keeps going. When we come back, we'll open our minds and spirits. Five. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. Two. Yeah, you're fine. I know it's kind of getting not out very much and I'm like, no, this isn't worth it. Gotta get out, have fun. Carpe diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. CARP advocates for social inclusion, which is a big factor in healthy aging, and Brian is a perfect example. Well, we're here at Lakeside, somewhere off of Harrison. Boys, where are we? Hale. Where? Hale. Hale Creek. Hale Creek. Rolling in British Columbian backcountry, Zuma Brian Pratt found his community off the beaten path. Uh, how much deflation are we talking? Well, it depends on where we're going. I usually go down to about 18 pounds uh, PSI. Sometimes people go down to 20. My off-roading vehicle of choice is a 2017 Toyota Tacoma off-road. I've uh, lifted it, bigger tires than what it had. Spring to fall, I, have a, I put a tent on it. Oh, so you go camping in it? Yes. So yep. is this an expensive hobby to get into? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so wh why did you fall into off-roading? Uh, did you have many hobbies beforehand? or? You know, I went on to the different Facebook forums, actually, and, and it, it kind of grew from there. Well, they say social isolation as we age is a big deal, is a yes. big issue. Yeah, yeah, and I was almost getting into that. You were getting into? Yeah, social uh, isolation. And I was kind of getting not out very much, and I was like, you know, this isn't worth it. Got to get out, have fun. And meet, meet, meet people. Meet really good people, yeah. The people I've met, like, he's, some of these people are like my best friends now. Yeah, you're fine. A fantastic way to see the backcountry. I'm Dean Atwell, Carpe Diem. And Gloria, that, that speaks to your social inclusion uh, comment earlier, we at CARP totally advocate for that because the more associated you are with people, 
the longer and happier and healthier your life will be. Right, and that, that works on several different levels. So the one is that uh, to get yourself out to be with people. The other is to increase the variety of people that you work with or that you play with. And do you think, Elizabeth, too, that as we expand our circles, we also become a little bit pickier? Oh, yes. We're, we have a different criteria now for who we want to engage with, don't we? Exactly. And I think that something we need to talk about, obviously, is what happens to people when they get Alzheimer's. People start to leave those people because they can no longer communicate the same way. So it's really important to realize that's a reality of thousands of Canadians now. You know, Elizabeth, it sounds like we're talking about overcoming adversity. One thing, my dad always said, listen, if you get knocked down, that doesn't matter. Pick yourself up off the floor and get going. <laughs> so there we did. Oh, sure, after you get divorced, um, you quit working, your life totally changes, yeah. So what'd you do to stay up? I don't know, I just adapt, you know. I broke my foot a couple of years ago. I played, you know, high caliber uh, hockey for a bunch of years and then that put me right off. And then it took me about two years to get back. When I was 20, it would take me two months to get back. So I'm fully recovered, playing again, um, quite active, yeah. The point is you didn't stop. No, no. Um, it's kind of a need thing. It's, um, uh, I think that if I miss a year of hockey, I'm done for life. Sure, Blue, our bodies used to recover faster when we were younger, but the thing is we have to just keep trying to recover. And uh, tell us about your journey because you were on the floor and now look at you, like yeah. full on. Yeah. Well, I can say my experience with this uh, dialysis, I do it three times a week, four and a half hours of crack. I don't, it's, it's kind of swallowed up my life. But I've, I've had to uh, scale back a little bit because it's hard to insure someone who's in my condition, but they still, like I said, I, I get gigs. You told me enough that uh, the word quit just doesn't enter into uh, a Zoomer's no, vocabulary. No, no, That's no, not going to happen. No. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll see it's never too late for anything, and I mean anything. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. My family thought I was crazy, but they thought I would change my mind by the time it came around, but I didn't. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. It's now time to go around the table for our panel's final thoughts. Any advice or any final thoughts that you would like to give the audience on what it's like to be a dynamic person aging? Well, I can say it's wonderful in many ways because you feel far more secure about who you are and what you know. And I think when you're in your 20s, you're never quite sure if you really have the answer, you know. And now I do have the answer. You know, my daughter's getting married in three weeks and I have the right answers for her. Passing you know, the wisdom on, passing it on. Blue, your final thoughts. Well, I would like to relate a story I heard on NPR some years ago. It was this woman who was uh, a marathon runner. And she was, she was being interviewed because she was turning 94. And they said, well, uh, do you have advice for people? Because you've achieved this wonderful. She said, um, have as much fun as you can have. And for God's sake, stop taking yourself so seriously. <laughs> yes. I thought that was the most brilliant thing I've ever heard. I'd love to leave that with the group. Oh, I can't wait to show you this video. Here's a perfect example of two people that personify it's never too late. All right, we're all geared up, ready to go. How are you really feeling? Fun. Really great. Really excited? Yeah. Etta and Henry both went skydiving in their 90s to raise some money for a new seniors care home. It was their idea to skydive and we basically just put a celebration around it to uh, just enhance all the amazing things that they were doing. All right, let's go skydiving. Okay. Airplanes ready? Just give me the cord to pull it and I'll pull it. You want to know the secret of getting old? Yeah, I do. Don't die. You're a little more than halfway up. How are you feeling? Doing great. Steady as a rock. 
home, my family thought I was crazy, but they thought I would change my mind by the time it came around, but I didn't. You're not gonna chicken out, are you? exciting part is when they open the doors yeah and then you sit out there and you look out and first jump you go down and the parachute doesn't open, all you say is, Lord, here I come, right? That's exactly right. I had told my family that we were either going to celebrate my birthday or my life, so. Oh. <laughs> Sit down. Awesome Beautiful. job. Congratulations. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't it? Yeah. So cool. oh. so cool. Having a sense of humor, that's it. That's the biggie. <laughs> right? Don't take yourself too seriously. No. Yeah. Have a sense of humor. Do we get happier as we age? Well, there is some data that suggests that's the case, and that the toughest time is around middle age, when people have these crises and they start to sort of look and, and think about how much time do I have left, and do I want to continue to be who I am. I'm so grateful to you all for coming, Blue, Gloria, and Elizabeth. If you would like to see a conversation at this table, get in touch. And that's the show. Remember, as our CARP president, Moses Neimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So, Carpe Diem and seize your day. Thank you so much for listening.